Yeah, this is just fine. Holy crud, is this fine? All of this is okay. Greetings, everyone. I am glad to be here, and I am glad that you are here as well. We're back here with some jank, this time in standard. Uh, and we're playing a little deck that I like to refer to as Hush now. Of course, the card in question is Hushbringer, of course. And I think it should be relatively good now that you don't have the downside of having Uro come down and ruin your Hushbringer plan. So how do we... Uh, make the most of Hushbringer. Well, I think the primary one we're going to be trying to abuse here is Clackbridge Troll. When it enters, an opponent creates three zero ones. If they don't get these zero ones, we just have an 8-8 Trample Haste with the downside of, yes, your, our opponent can sacrifice a creature to tap it, and we gain three life and draw a card. But more importantly, they'll, they have to sacrifice actual cards that they have spent, uh, you know, their cards for, not creatures that we have given them right uh and so that seems pretty strong uh we also are going to try and take advantage of hunted nightmare where it's just a three mana four five menace where normally our opponent gets a death touch counter but if it doesn't happen then we're not going to worry about it and of course we're also going to be trying to close the game with another individually powerful card fearless fledgling that gets a one one counter and flying every time a land enters um so then, uh, beyond that, we do have Kervak uh, as a one-of in the main, because we're uh, best of one deck. And this card, pretty strong against the Scoots, uh, pretty strong against uh, the Cobra there. And uh, only when we're on the play, though, unfortunately, and oftentimes this will be a little slow on that. But as long as our opponent's off to a slower start, uh, or we have some of our own interaction. We do have four Heartless Acts, three Hagra's Mauling. Um, you know, I think we theoretically can still do some things. Uh, also, you may know we do have Kenrith the Return King. This card is quite strong in general, as long as you've got mana to pump into it. But it's often been used in other shells, specifically for the Trample and Haste and the draw cards. So it's very often seen in Jeskai shells or even Teamer shells where it's the draw card and, yeah, just like counters and stuff. Alternatively, though, for us, we're going to use it for its reanimation ability. We have lots of relatively expendable creatures here. None of them are super, super crazy. But being able to reanimate them, I think, is quite strong. Paying five mana to reanimate a Hunted Nightmare is actually not the end of the world uh, later on in the game. In the same way, Fearless Fledgling, not a crazy card, but if we're making our land drops, it gets bigger and has flying. If we're not, then no big deal. We'll just get something else. But more importantly, we can reanimate things like Selfless Savior to protect Kenrith, right? And then just reanimate it again after that. Uh, alternatively, of course, we can be reanimating Hushbringer. If it's good and so good our opponent killed it, then we'll just bring it right back. Uh, and Clackbridge Troll. One of the downsides of this card is sometimes you go, okay, Clackbridge Troll, they get three dudes or don't, and they just go, okay, kill spell, right? Being able to bring back an 8-8 Trample Haste is pretty strong, folks. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and give this a uh, spin. Uh, come on out and see us in the games. All right, folks. Here we are up against Hugh Jolly. Good luck, Hugh Jolly. Yeah, I think we'll uh, keep this hand. Gonna start on a Hagra Mauling, I guess. And pass the turn. It's strongly possible we wanted to begin on Archfiend's Vessel, but we really, really do want to get... Uh, we don't want to get stuck on lands here. I think that's going to be really important. So we're going to go ahead and go with a Bright Climb Pathway and play a Hushbringer. And pass over to our opponent, who plays a Ruin Crab. All right. And a land. We're going to go ahead and mill over a couple of cards. Yeah. That is fine. So let's just kill the Ruin Crab. Get in for one, play an Archfiend's Vessel, and pass. The uh, Call of the Death Dweller definitely gets better with uh, 
our opponent milling us over, but I do think we, in in general, our deck is going to kill relatively slowly. So I, I don't think we want to allow them to advance their game plan uh, too easily, right? Okay. Yeah, this is just fine. Holy crud, is this fine. All of this is okay. Opponent spending a Brazen Borrower to prevent one damage. That is not a big deal to us. Mystic Sanctuary enters untapped because they do have three other islands, but of course don't have any instants and sorceries to bring back. So we're just going to go ahead and go straight to combat. Opponent has another Brazen Borrower. Sun's Hushbringer straight back to hand. All right, well, we're going to Archfiend's Vessel. Attack for two. Play uh, land and slam another Hushbringer. We're expecting this one to get counterspelled. It doesn't happen. Wow, folks. Holy crud. Yeah, this is... <laughs> All of this is fine. We are, we are not put off by this in any way, shape, manner, or form. Glimpse of Freedom. Draws our opponent a card. At instant speed, so I assume our opponent's looking for land drops here. Uh, because they could have done this on our end step, and it indeed at least bluffed a counterspell, if not, uh... Alright, gonna grab that glimpse of freedom right back. Oh, that, I guess that could be. Didn't have a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of this makes sense. Well, let's see if our opponent has a counterspell here. If they do, it removes their opportunity to cast the Brazen Borrower, and we get in for three. Our opponent drops the uh, 13, which is not very many points of life. Yeah. Our opponent does not get the three one ones or zero ones because, of course, we have Hushbringer. So our opponent can sacrifice the Brazen Borrower, which they do in fact do. But all of this is fine with us, folks. Our 8-8 eight eight is now in play. And we're at 30 life. We have three cards in our hand. Our opponent does have four cards and half a Brazen Borrower left to cast. So there is that. But don't forget, we also have, you know, 11 power in play, right? This is a bad situation to find, or for our opponent to find themselves in. They go ahead and uh, glimpse of freedom and concede. Good game, Hugh Jolly. Good game. All right, folks. We are uh, back here, and I think this hand is capable. We're probably going to lead on Hagger Mauling again. Uh, we really don't want to be slowed down too much by the fact that this is a tap land. So when it starts in our opening hand in this way, I think we've we're kind of priced into starting with it on the battlefield most of the time. And then, yeah, I think it's just going to be a fearless fledgling. Because it grows over time, every time we make a land drop. Opponent looking at our stuff. Chainweb or Acne are pretty good against, like, the rogue deck and stuff. Oh, come on. Opponent has the ram through. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. All right, well. Fine. Archfiend's Vessel and Hushbringer. Go on ahead, opponent. Opponent looking at Hushbringer again. Considering. A ram through would not be good enough to kill Hushbringer right now. They would need to do something more. Alright. No, no blocks. This is fine. Alright. Land of War Visionary does not draw the card because Hushbringer is uh, doing its thing. Oh boy. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's a really good card as long as we draw another black mana at some point here. We're, of course, going to strike back immediately for two more, or for two damage. 
This will gain back our life. We return to 20. Our opponent drops to 18. It is possible that was a little hasty of us. Maybe we should not have cared too much about the Land War Visionary. I just didn't want them ramping into a very powerful 5-drop this turn. But it is possible we wanted to wait there. Well, shoot, folks. Yeah, this is not ideal. We really would have preferred if this Hagrid Blood Pit was either a basic or just if it was, you know, if we a different kill spell like a Heartless Act or something. The way it currently is, is unfortunate indeed. Let's see. Yeah, let's... Hunted Nightmare, I guess. Uh, they don't get the Death Touch counter, which is nice. But... I also wouldn't say it's strictly free, either. We're going to get in for a couple of points of damage. If our opponent has a ram through or something like that, you know, they're likely to use it somewhere else. This does recoup the life a little bit. For us, we go up to 17 instead of 15. They drop to 17. So that portion is good. Opponent gets in. Sure, we block. We will give our Hunted Nightmare Indestructible. Gain a life. Now, our opponent could have a kill spell here. But it won't go on the Hunted Nightmare. The Archfiend's Vessel getting killed would, act you know, would actually be kind of a benefit right now. Uh, we get to call a Death Waller back. Oh my goodness, Stonecrawl Serpent is actually quite problematic. Unfortunate indeed. Well... Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Death touch counter. Menace counter. And wait. Oh, darn it. Oh, folks, that was a punt. We were supposed to play our land afterward. Uh, I got distracted. I'm... Yeah, that is unwise. Sitting here thinking about the other potential lines we need to take. And darn it, that is... Not good, folks. That is not good at all. Opponent makes a land drop up to seven lands now. That was... Uh... That is a relevant number. Oh, Nyx Bloom Ancient. Oh, my word. What is our opponent getting up to over there? Sure. Unfortunately, folks, I do believe our opponent has the long game against us here. And that is unsettling. All right, your vote. Not great. All right, this comes back with four other cards. Sure. All right. No, I think we're going to hold back. The Fearless Fledgling is a very, very good blocker here because we can, of course, give it 
uh, death touch, or it has death touch, and we can give it indestructible. All the while being able to potentially uh, get favorable blocks with the Hunted Nightmare if they swing too heartily. Oh no, this is a ram through? Oh no. Oh, maybe not. All right. Ooh, Order of Midnight. That one will come in handy, folks. That one will come in handy. I'm doing lots of math over there. I don't like that. All right. Opponent, doing math again. Choosing to forego the opportunity to play. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and just cycle away and endoth Triome right here during our main phase in case there's something more enticing to do. Another Call of the Death Dwellers. Well, that is good, folks. That is good indeed. Suddenly, our... Archfiend's Vessels forcing, being forced to chump is not a problem. Being able to return them all from the graveyard to the battlefield, quite advantageous there. Hushbringers, of course, preventing Yorvo from growing. All right. This is a good one. For sure. Now, the thing we're concerned about is, at at some point, with the next Bloom Ancient out, our opponent's going to be able to draw... Ooh, boy. Okay. Kenrith. That's a good one. All right, Gem Razor. That's really annoying. That's more reach. Of course, we prevent any potential onto the battlefield shenanigans with Hushbringer. So all that's fine. But the reach is really annoying. All right. Going to start getting in. All right. So we're going to wait here. And reanimate at the end step. Oh, interesting. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> this decision has never been easier. Oh. Oh, my word. Folks. I'm a man of short. And that is a huge punt. Uh... Oh, my word. Can't believe I did that. Yeah. We only have so much time, folks, because I have goofed in a very real way. 
really desperately need a land drop. Uh, did not get it. Did not get it at all. Ugh, holy crud. That is so unfortunate, folks. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay, Great Henge. That is very bad for us. With the Undo Inversion, we can get rid of it. Uh... Okay. Yeah, but they do get to start re regaining all the life we've taken. It's taken us several turns to get back. Oh my goodness. But fortunately, we are there now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we do have it. Thank heavens. You know what? I think we're going to save it save this one now. Yeah. Man oh man, folks, that was <laughs> not great. Okay. Destroying everything. Opponent adds 6 mana to the mana pool. We get in for nine. Pass the turn. Oh, folks, man, that was... Yeah, that, that one punt was not my best time. I've got to get my head back in the game, though. You, you, in order to have a good mental, uh, when you uh, make a small error, like miscounting and things like that, you know, you got to recognize that everybody does that. It's okay. You just got to focus again. So here we are trying to focus again. <laughs> Chain Weber Rachnir. Doing its thing. Gem Razor coming on down. Becoming a 7-7. Seven, seven. And ramming through onto our Kenrith. Sure. That is actually not a huge deal. Yep. Yeah. Down to two. We're going to go ahead and call of the Death Dwellers back a selfless savior. And an Archfiend's Vessel. And then we're going to Order of Midnight a Kenrith back to hand. And cast an Order of Midnight. And pass... This, of course, having Menace means two creatures have to block it. And we currently have three individually lethal threats, unless our opponent can gain some life, which is very possible. Ooh, Vivian, Monster's Advocate. That's not great. Yeah. One more creature or something, and they, you know, we do get got a little bit here. Okay, well, never mind. Yep. This now being able to be, or being forced to be able to block by all of the Reach creatures means suddenly our opponent is in very difficult shape indeed. Opponent. Oh, folks, thank heavens. Uh, despite my inability to do math, uh, thinking we had our eight mana when we only had seven, and preparing the board in advance, still able to bring out the win. Thank heavens. Uh, geez Louise. Uh, but good game, opponent. Good game. All right, folks, here we are... Uh... 
up against Altari in 666, and I guess we'll keep it. I think we are going to lead on the Hagger Mauling anyway. <clears throat> Seems to be a pretty regular thing, but when you keep a three lander, uh, it is pretty. It is a pretty regular occurrence to get stuck on lands if you don't if you're not careful. So, oh, there we go. Okay, Archfiend's Vessel for our opponent, and Selfless Savior and Archfiend's Vessel on our side of the board. Oh boy, opponent's on Clerics. Interesting. Well, they're going to go tall here, no question about it. How about a Hunted Nightmare? Opponent gets to place a Death Touch counter wherever they want. Goes on the Archfiend's Vessel. Sure. Alright, we pass. Yep. It resolves. Opponent scries top. Is that another clerical life bond? No. Well, we're going to crack our selfless savior. Save the hunted wet, or hunted nightmare. I seriously doubt our opponents. Yeah, not not looking to attack there. So we'll hold back as well. If the opponent attacks with the archfiend's vessel, of course we'll trade archfiend's vessels with it. Ooh, banishing light. All right, fair enough. I mean, okay. I will snap off this block. Now, I kind of recognize from our opponent's perspective they're trying to capitalize, but that did seem a little odd to me. All right, Clackbridge Troll. Opponent gets their three goats. They do sacrifice. We gain three life draw card. It's a land. So next turn, we can both Clackbridge Troll and Archfiend's Vessel. These Clackbridge Trolls are much better when we have the namesake of our deck here, uh, Hushbringer, folks. But naturally, that is... Not currently in the work. Oh, there we go. All right. So Hushbringer and Archfiend's Vessel, because we can't afford the Clackbridge Troll here. Opponent has more removal. I mean, they've got to have something in that hand. They've got five cards over there, and they're kind of stuck on three lands, you know? Looking at their cards, looking at our cards, it's Taborax. Nothing happens because Hushbringer uh, tends to do that to folk. No, no blocks. You got it. We drop to 12. Ooh. Well, brand new Cl Clackbridge Troll comes down. We prevent the zero ones from entering the battlefield. Our opponent, of course, still has uh, zero ones to work with, unfortunately. But we go up to 15, or 15, draw a card. That's a swamp for our trouble. Opponent's Tabor Axe is slowing down our Hushbringer here, but... Okay, opponent leads with a Serrated Scorpion. Serrated Scorpion gets in for 6. No, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take this damage. Straight down to 9. Interesting. Well, let's... Cycle this away. Fair enough. Clackbridge Troll. Opponent sacrifices the final goat. We go up to 12. A heartless act, eh? Alright. We're going to drop our opponent to 21. Play a swamp and pass the turn. Another cleric of life's bond. I wouldn't say that's great news, but with, as long as our Hushbringer survives, it's not terrible news either. All right. We're going to kill the Tabor Axe. Take six. Down to seven. Seven. 
Not real exciting, but okay. Hey, how about another Clackbridge troll, folks? All right, opponent can sacrifice creatures if they want to. They choose not to tap the one. Do they tap the other? They choose not to. All right, we kill that cleric. Drop our opponent to three, we go up to nine. Pass the turn. What say you, Altarian? They kill the Hushbringer. Unfortunate. Oh, hey. That's a good one. So, Kenrith. Gain five life. So that these serrated scorpions can't uh, get us despite my, you know, occasional problems with stacking things properly. Indeed. All right, so we go up to, or we go down to 10. Go up to 11. Opponent drops to six. That is the fourth land, so it's possible there are Hagramallings and all kinds of sort stuff that are just waiting for us. Also possible there's like, uh... well, Luris wasn't quite the one I was looking for, but that is definitely one we need to be concerned about. Archfiend's Vessel coming on back. It's going to be a 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, Cleric of Life's Bond. Gaining a life, growing up to a 6-6. Six -six. No blocks. Dropped five. All right, so let's call some Death Dwellers for Hushbringer and the sel er, Selfless Savior. And yep, sure enough, that is good enough for Altarian. Good game, Altarian. Good game. All right, folks, we're back here looking at this deck. Uh, and honestly, it performed pretty well. I'm still pretty uncertain about the Kervak. But admittedly, in all the games we played, we never did even draw it one time. Uh, so it's awfully difficult to draw conclusions about a card you have never seen in play. So there's that. Uh, that said, the rest of the deck honestly performed pretty well, all things considered. We did uh, edit out one game where there was a blue-white control player who was very, very deliberate, uh, let's say. Very, uh, considered every option for a very, very long time. And it, yeah, not it was not entertaining to watch. And we did end up losing in the end uh, anyway. It was a very, very close game. It came down to two. I almost put it in because it was some really intricate gameplay in there. But it honestly went on for an, etern an eternity. And it was not entertaining in that way because it was blue-eye control. So we ended up editing that out. Uh, all, all things said, I, I really did enjoy the gameplay patterns in the deck. Even when the Clackbridge Trolls came down without Hushbringer, uh, it created some really fun and interesting moments. Um, Kenrith was really sweet, caught a lot of people off guard. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure this is the right build. It's quite possible, considering our abilities to rebuild post-board wipe with a number of different reanimation things as well as some protection things that maybe just maybe we're supposed to have some more undo inversion at the very least or possibly even some regular board wipes i do think i would make the switch from four archfiend's vessels down to two and go up to four selfless saviors these ones were great these ones were not great i expected to not have hushbringer so often just because our opponents might kill it that the Call of the Death Dwellers would be able to get back Archfiend's Vessels very, very regularly. That did not seem to be the case. Even when the Hushbringer was really wrecking our opponent's game plans, they tended to ignore it. So I think we would make this switch in a heartbeat. Uh, possibly some more Order of Midnight. I'm not really sure. 
uh, and maybe again over top of the Karavik. We could have used a little more spot removal here and there as well. So uh, all of that a possibility for the future. Uh, in any case, I appreciate you uh, coming to hang out, and I would encourage you to uh, come and tune into our Twitch stream every now and then. Uh, there'll be links about. Uh, and just put down in the comments, if you wouldn't mind, uh, different changes that you might personally make to the deck. Uh, I'd love to hear. So I appreciate it. And uh, you folks, have a wonderful day.